Hello, Axel. Welcome. You are officially uh, now in front of the camera, uh, and you were you brought us to us uh, boogie nights. Yeah. Why did yeah. you Why'd you pick this film? Uh, I don't know. It's one of the first that comes to mind for me when I think about my favorite movies. I don't know if I'd say it's my number one favorite. You know, it's kind of like a hard thing to yeah to decide, but it's up there, top five, top three, maybe. You know, oh, for me. What, why uh, why does it make it so easy for you to choose it is it I'm sure it's a number of things but uh yeah, it's a number of th- I, by the way I totally forgot that the movie this movie starts with that like sad dramatic organ music and yeah. just the black screen yeah. yeah I guess I guess the reason I love this movie so much there's a million reasons and we'll get into all of them but like for starters, I obviously the soundtrack's incredible. Oh yeah, I love the soundtrack. I actually worked at a seafood place years ago, and after a couple months working there, I started noticing half the songs playing on the thing were from Boogie Nights, and I pointed that to the guy, and he's like, "Oh yeah, nice catch. No one else had like pointed that out before." Huh. Um, but yeah, he he loves Boogie Nights. Apparently, he was a DJ on KMHD for a while. Anyways, oh no doubt. Um, music soundtrack incredible, but uh, it's like the dynamic movement all the time the camera's always moving not even in always the sim- not but, always but, but, but right when you right very, the, very moment, the moment you think hey the camera's not moving it starts moving again yeah it, yeah you know even little moments where you think that there's not a whole lot of movement necessary someone walks in the door and says something to someone he'll like they'll move and then like pass a post and then it'll whip pan this way and then it'll whip back and do like a push zoom it's just so dynamic do they or was that was that that was they, they right there right there i always thought when they go past roller girl i thought that was a cut but watching again i like couldn't really tell but there's one cut at the party when they do the long party scene mm-hmm. where someone comes back and like shoots the camera mm-hmm. and in the flash it hides a cut yeah and that one's like pretty obvious right. um that's the only one and that, they, I, that and, really and that shot that you're talking about with the flash are they yeah. are do they is it this do they cut to the same shot basically yeah the same shot so they're, mar- they're they're picking their favorites yeah, yeah they're marrying together but that's odd right if that if do mm-hmm. you think maybe they matched the shot and then continued that setup after or like hey this is where we end and this is where we're going to start again and i don't know you know like was, know. Is, it, is it too was it too complicated to just keep going yeah uh, they or, might or have, was uh, that or they were just like let's put a flash here because the second half of that one was way better and we love the first half of the other part i love this guy I was yeah. I never noticed this guy before, but I was paying attention this time. And he's just like he's just like, oh man, we gotta get these thing up there. We gotta be. He's just like saying all this like angry chef gibberish. Yeah. It's yeah. so funny. Yeah, it's <laughs> fun. I, I, last time I watched this, I, I sort of um, uh, uh, had to rewind it a couple of times to get some of the additional the little dial- side. Yeah, the little There's a lot of stuff uh, happening. Well, yeah, on the I mean, edges. I hadn't watched this movie since I, you know, since I've. Be- be, yeah. Been a filmmaker, really. You go from the glitz and glamour of this big, um, and he sees this, this shut the door scene, and then his, this guy is in this cramped little apartment. We get this shitty hallway. Um, it's the all fuck gray does it look like I'm doing? shadowy. Yeah. This woman's. Ugh. Can you close the door? She that's, looks like a monster. That's my wife. You're fucking. Oh, that's my uh, wife. You're fucking. So I didn't know this shot of the room spinning around. That, you get the shat- cock shot. Yeah, you get that. Yeah, you get the <laughs> cock shot. I mean, because like that's like the, the only long time ass we... car. Oh shit! I forgot to point it out. At the beginning of the movie, I swear that car is parked on the side of the road in that opening shot when it goes in the bar. Oh, I two, noticed that, another poster of it. Too. I noticed that, that last night that it's like on the street. That car, like. I don't know if it's an Easter egg or what it is or, or something, but uh. I swear to God that car's like on the street at the very beginning. Oh, okay. So it's it's at the opening of Boogie. Yeah, Night, at the it? very opening. I swear, like when it goes. Well, past that, the that street. would make sense that another one of somebody else owns a car like that, yeah. and you know, and that's it's that's why he's working. That's what he's trying to work towards. Oh man, this guy. Yeah, he's fucking stupid. It's very Rob from uh, It's Always Sunny, <laughs> doing his karate there in the mirror. Yeah, you know. Now that I've seen this movie several times, you know, I watch mm-hmm. it at least once a year. I'd say every Christmas. Um, no, it's not, I don't really watch it. No, uh, Christmas Vacation. That's my Christmas tradition movie. Yeah, yeah. My family's uh, too, actually. But so uh, I've seen this many times and I know like the story arcs of these characters now. Pretty pretty um, much by heart. But there's things that I didn't notice that get set up at the very beginning of the movie. When Burt Reynolds, um, Jack Warner, he's always working the angles and they set that up very quickly. He goes into uh, the kitchen to talk to... Marky Mark to talk to Eddie and he's like trying not to be crass. He's trying not to swear and stuff like that. And so he's like, that's really, fun. he's like, now that, you know, I'm not full of uh, doggy, doggy doo-doo, doo-doo, doggy, or, yeah. it's like, it's hard for him not to be crass. Cause he's so used to being like, yeah, fuck her. Come on her tits, baby. Yeah. Get it on the, you know, yeah. he's like, he's, so, he's such a dirty, like 
creepy old man. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, it, it's hard for him at first to try to suppress being the sleazy porno director but he's like trying to this is like a new yeah well this is a new workhorse for him and he's trying to like put his best foot forward and it's like hard for him not to be a dirty dirty old man you know what i mean i I thought that was kind of interesting i never noticed that before i think that okay obviously he's heard of him then otherwise why would he be so polite well that's what i was wondering because they would show so polite Right. He doesn't. He doesn't know the guy's name already, though. He doesn't. He asked. He asked him his name. Well, he asked him about his life. Well, maybe that's I like assume someone people. told him about him, but I don't know who. Mm-hmm. I doubt he just saw him across the room and was like, "Hey, I wonder." I think he probably heard about what was going. He heard on. about. He heard about him. Right? Yeah, somehow he heard. Someone. He heard about his big donkey dick. Yeah. All right. He heard that he worked here. Yeah. He <laughs> said he saw him walking. He's like, I saw his chance to pounce like a wolf. Yeah. Maybe he did know his name, but even if he wanted to remember or not, that yeah. guy meets so many people anyway, so he doesn't really give a fuck. And plus, he's yeah. thinking, like, you're going to become whatever I want you to be, hopefully, anyway. Yeah, I think but it I'm was also very as polite as hell. I think so he you heard... make a really good point. And... Well, he knows he's buddies with all these perverts. I think I think probably he heard from someone, because he when he comes in the kitchen, he's like, uh, what, do you want to see it, or you want to watch, or what do you... And he's like, five or ten. Um, so... Guys have been uh, paying him to do right. this shit. Yeah, Jack probably heard from some. I forgot from some he's guy. Been whoring himself. He's been out. doing it already. Yeah, he's been yeah. doing it, and uh, and uh, Jack's that's got why his ear. He's ever fall back into it. At, yeah, because he goes back to his old spot. Yeah, that's rough at the end when that's he's like, I, 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 he's like twenty and he's like, oh my god, it's ten. I remember, like, I remember oh. that being closer to the ending, and it's actually not. It, gets, it speeds like, up. Well, the ending speeds up. Well, we made Alfred Lena and the second half of the movie like picks up speed. Sure, you know, sure. But I just, I thought for sure that that was pretty much like the You're really close to the end. Yeah, it's, it's pretty the, close the to the end. The movie does a great job of like, I mean, when I watch that it. That scene is actually the last big scene before the Coke deal. It's done at the same time as Roller Girl stomping scene. Yeah, that's that. All of their lives falling apart. That scene where you get yeah. the doom. And, and she's also trying to get her daughter's to custody bell. that's happening all at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the all the falling apart happens, and then right after that is the Alfred Molina Coke deal scene. Right. Well, it's it, well, it kind of builds up a little bit, but yeah, that's yeah. pretty much. And then yeah, me, well, no, it goes straight to that. It cuts straight to them in the room saying, "Okay, here's right, the plan. right." That's what I mean. It you builds know? up. Yeah. It doesn't go right to Alfred. So now she is spying to make sure it's as big as 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 Jack. Yes, she's spying. For yeah, Jack. she's she's doing the homework for for Jack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack's off. She's on. <laughs> oh man, boogie nights, boogie nights, and that song's no not God. in this movie. Yeah. yeah, then they just they. This is almost creepy in a way that they just roll around the corner. Well, in the this car is exactly and... how they do it later. With the, it's almost like how they get their comeuppance because that's what they have. That's what she gets like. Tur- like that's when they the limo. You know, the that's limo, that's yeah, New yeah. Year's, and it's it's almost mirrored completely how they pick. It's just a different angle, or it's the same vibe. They're hey, like mm. we used to pick up kids, like uh, to be like our yeah. Know. We're gonna go find a young stud and see if he wants to meet Roller Girl. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. By the way, uh, Burt Reynolds looks so damn cool in this movie. Uh, I, this I, is yeah. interesting too. This scene where it crops the other characters out, and it does that when she starts focusing on him, and it, and it slowly pans away, and all you get is that. That they're at the edge and there's all the space. This is manipulation. Uh, meanwhile, he's doing his bullshit, his canned yeah, response. Uh, we need lights. Because he, he says it again later we need on. Twenty in the movie. people, you know. We he says it later on when when the, to new, the, kid, to the new kid when the yeah. new kid comes yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Canned and beat. Everyone fucks their brains out, and that's fine. God, this movie is so <laughs> is so well put together. That it's so film. good for for what his second film. Second you know? second feature film. Second yeah. feature, and that's, the first one was like really small budget compared to this. Yeah, still uh, even even if it was small, they 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 got like fucking access to casinos and shit for that one, so pretty big. But it was mostly kind of an yeah. on the road movie, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You could fake a lot of it. I just love how um, I never, I don't really feel like there's any wasted scenes in this movie. It feels like every scene has a purpose and has a vibe and has it. It like you never have a moment to to just get bored because there's always these awesome songs. All this camera movement, mm-hmm. there's um, uh, character development happening, you're getting all this like minutia, cool camera angles. He does a lot of interesting stuff with the camera. He, uh, you know, I, I, almost to a fault. That's when you're seeing, you're seeing Paul Thomas Anderson, the artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that, that is like his fingerprint. Like when something goes wrong, you know. <laughs> I love, I love that little detail. She comes in, he's like, "Listen, baby," and then she's like, "She's like, oh yeah, is this it? We're gonna fuck." She's so excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's she's yeah, and I forgot I forgot how much nudity was in this. There's a lot of nudity in this movie, and it's that's silly for me to forget that it's all about making pornos. <laughs> yeah, it's a but, porno movie, so. but like these are these are these are these are at the time even like building name of the stars. stars. They're stars, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and I think, what was it? He didn't want to play the role because he was too sleazy, right? I think he soured on it after the fact. I think no he doubt. soured on it during the process because he was butting heads with yeah. the guy. And I think also over time he started to realize he's like, yeah, I'm not really the good guy in this movie. I'm kind of a sleazeball. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew that going into it too, but I think it just kind of left a bad taste in his mouth and he maybe wanted to do something more. He said he didn't care for the subject matter. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Um, that's, so, a, that's a funny hat. Is this movie a dark comedy? To me, this is a better life lesson than the in your face oh it's drama and not very much comedy as requiem for a dream is yeah so yeah, it's not i as think on this the movie this movie has drama. life lessons yeah and you know what i think i've learned over the years because i'm not always a big drama guy you know me i like psychological thrillers i like sure. comedy sure. i don't like a whole lot of other th i mean i do but you know drama is not my big strong point for movies and yet i love this movie and i think the reason why it actually works is because of the levity and the and the the silliness and how likable everyone is and how charming and fun and cool everything is right because then the the parts that hurt really hurt i love whereas I, when you have yeah. a movie where everyone's the whole time oh i'm it's, dying no, and my wife yeah. killed herself and it's burning okay like i can't i'm an it. orphan and my dog died i start to laugh at the movie i start to laugh and now there's a moving shot that they just stay still yeah that's brilliant it lets the actors be mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Um, and John owns this scene. I'm not trying to say anything against Mark Wahlberg. You know, this is definitely one of his better performances, being He's from, a, in from a great movie. director. He's great in this movie. Um, but the camera is able to hold on him. Mm -hmm. You know this and this. I mean, this is this his is shy... this, this is a bonding sequence yeah, because yeah, they, yeah. these guys are going to be together for so long. So yeah. that's such smart writing and such great introduction and. and we're about, he's about to be the teammate person that is going to allow us to see, like, through his eyes almost, as the audience, like, this, a person that he can talk to as their lives fall apart. He's there mm. until he comes begging back to Jack. And he sees him run off in the distance, just like he came from in the distance. By the way, that actor, fantastic at being a creep in this movie. The, the oh, guy yeah. Who plays the, the colonel. He, I, I like how they cut to him, like, getting fucking raped in the... <laughs> <laughs> In the, in the prison. In the prison. Yeah, they have all these... They Shut have up. All these, Stop crying. They have all these happy, like, resolutions. they in the toilet. Actually, they're not all even happy resolutions, but they have all these resolution sneak sneak peeks mm -hmm. into these people's lives, and, like, people are kind of coming back together and repairing things, and even though they're back where they started, and it's not, like, a happy ending necessarily, they're getting something, and then they get... Ha and then in the middle of that, they cut to the colonel getting slapped around by this guy in prison. Could be worse. Could be Shut worse. Up, colonel. Could be a lot Shut worse. Up. I said, Shut up, colonel. And he's like, ooh. Yeah. Stop crying. <laughs> I'm glad we at least get to see that the pedophile is getting his uh, comeuppance. It's like all these people are trying to leave their their, their themselves. They behind. want to live in a fantasy. They want to live in a fantasy. They change their names. They make up some bullshit name. They make up their their persona or whatever, and they're all just having fun, doing drugs, and having sex. And um, yeah, they're living in a fantasy world. Oh, like, I love the, the end when though. the past yeah. comes back. This poor guy. Yeah, like, this poor guy. But I love how like you know at the end where he uh, Jack Horner's walking around his place and he goes like it's like this and he's like so full of himself and he puts his arms move down. the dirt from this side of the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he does like this. Ah, uh, yeah, da da da. And he goes through the hallway. I want it mellow. Yeah, mellow, mellow is mellow. what I want. Yeah, mellow. Yeah. But then his yeah. arms go down as soon as he sees the portrait, the terrible portrait of Whoa. William H Macy's character. What do you think? Because like, how do they? How do you think they feel about him? They don't and that's mention the same, him. And that's the same painter that painted all the portraits of, of him, right? Like, oh, this one's yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. look. They're, they're right all terrible. All. They're all yeah. terrible. No, but I mean, after anyway, he does what he does. New Year's Eve. How do they feel about him? Because they don't mention him at all, not even once. And the only time you get a reference to him is that photo. So it's almost like well, going off of that. Do is, you think they feel bad? Do you think they no, feel they like it's their fault? Well, he, this they, they keep that photo there, right? The yeah. memory's there, but they give it. Uh, barely a thought it ruins the vibe the fantasy but it also okay. is a warning perhaps yeah this is fucked up though this but the way they keep the, the <laughs> way like, they oh keep maybe the uh, maybe you should get some new shit huh <laughs> you think yeah. you maybe you should get some new shit the way they keep the brevity of this is insane like that like they're like oh yeah we'll do it like that there's it, they're it's, handling this like they've done it a thousand times they, they're handling it like and they it, have probably done and it and they have times. yeah it's it's no big deal so jack kind of looks like He's leaning against the wall. He's trying to be casual, but honestly, he looks the most uncomfortable Defeated. to me. Defeated he looks the there. most uncomfortable. Yeah. The other two guys, they're standing tall and they got their chest puffs out. Like, yeah. like we're taking charge. Yeah, we'll take care of this. He looks kind of like uncomfortable. Our He's first Philip Seymour Hoffman in. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> his At belly 40 minutes in. Out, his belly sticking out. I read, a, I read some, uh, uh, some fucking review out there and it, the, the review that the head, it was like on Rotten Tomatoes and somebody's was. And, uh, 
and a movie full of stand-up performances, Philip Seymour stands out among them. <laughs> Something like that, right? He's pretty great in and this movie. Yeah. <laughs> such an idiot. I'm such an idiot. Oh, I felt so bad for him in that scene. That one really gets me. I just get, I get a poor guy. guy he's too. so he's so awkward and he wants and to be so cool. That's kind of sticky because I just yeah. had it. It's probably so a little sticky because I just yeah. Had it that was so embarrassing. He gets the car and he paints it. Oh, this is one of my one of the most hilarious. I've seen this. Part of the reason I wanted to watch this movie originally was because I've seen so many Boogie Nights references in other movies and TV shows. And I've seen this scene reference where it's like, ah, here you got a great big cock. And and I just thought it was so funny. And the first time I watched this movie, I didn't even know what it was about. I had no expectations going in. It was a sick day. I was just putting on movies. And like 20 minutes in, I was just engrossed. And then by the halfway point, what, New Year's Eve, I was completely in for the ride. And then it's it's just been one of my favorite movies ever since. You know, it's... Uh, it's fucked up that, uh, that uh, Jack yeah. says you got a great big cock. Oh, uh, I don't know. I, guess, I, guess, I don't know. I guess, I guess so. so. May I see it? <laughs> this face here. Cause this is the best part. But it, of course, it's from <laughs> the cur- of course it's from the colonel. Oh, <laughs> I love the long pause. No pun intended. Yeah. Well, thank you, Eddie. No problem. And then he like walks away, and he just he's just frozen. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just, he just like counting dollar signs in his, in his eyes. <laughs> he's such a creep. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the great transition. Uh-huh. great transition that though. was is that a that was almost like a yeah that was you know what this is this is the beginning of their delusions thinking that they're artists because they end up making music together and it's like the most terrible music oh ever. it's it's i thought it was really good but him being yelled that, oh that was so great dude this is the beginning of them yeah. being coming on the road you got takes a lot to get it out of the winner voice is all raspy it's really bad and then he's going oh, ooh, ah, ooh, he's like doing that dancing in the jumpsuit john it's c so riley funny. as an actor is doing a pretty good job oh. on the guitar though i mean but it's also he, yeah he obviously it. knows how to play guitar those right. are all real chords right he's exactly yeah and, the, and then but and then also having marky mark who was a singer that's what he was growing up he was are you serious yeah he was like a oh, five, four part five part band and he was marky mark was, was he good name. back then they were as a boy band man oh they were God. like a, hey yeah you know they, they did break, i thought he wasn't they, a boy they, they yeah, i thought he was a boy and everything yeah so he knew how to, he knows how to sing he knows how to sing he just was doing it really bad yeah. <laughs> this is great because the name is so powerful it's so sharp it's so sharp it just blows up and explodes I, and fire and it's, it's so and, sharp and it's so corny the version of it you yeah. know what i mean it says dirk diggler and it, it's, yeah. it's it's that it's i mean it's really I great it. and funny it. but it's like almost it's corny yeah he's, that's what he sees but, in his, but, head. He but, sees but, his but, name and shining lights yeah and yeah. that becomes that you know like that whole like shining lights thing becomes like a theme with him throughout the movie because even all the way at the end he's still like you're big bright shining star you big he, he just he loves yeah. this fantasy of being a star so in the context of this world that they're in it's not that burt reynolds is such a bad guy he takes care of his people. No, he leans, yeah. He, he takes, takes care hug, of his people. But here's how I take care of you. But, I mean, like, he gives Roller Girl a home. Yeah, exactly. I take care of you, but you, you need to fuck. do this for me. You got to fuck. Yeah, you got to do it. So it's like... But these the, guys all profess their love for fucking. Overall, this movie, it doesn't really paint this industry in a flattering light. But it also doesn't dehumanize these people. They all feel like real people. They all feel like they deserve some amount of respect. They all have their own flaws. And mm-hmm. some of them go really crazy, like Dirk, obviously. Um, but they're all human and they're all relatable. And I think that's what makes it feel so, like, bittersweet Yeah. a lot of the time. And it feels so human. It feels so real. And even though it, like, does not paint a flattering picture of this industry, because this industry robs them all of their dignity and their lives and their futures, basically. Um, but it doesn't do it in a way that seems degrading, you know? You have to care about your characters if you, I mean, and... Even if it's about a nasty, fucked up thing, right? Yeah. Uh, One of my uh, favorite like moments here. <laughs> yeah, the guy actually takes his eyes all off the, the camera. All the reaction shots, they're all like, holy shit. He's, he's, <laughs> he's about to come in his pants. He's about to bust there. in his yeah. pants. He's like, oh my God. Yeah, that... Li- this the lean, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> She's like, but why don't I make sure of something? This is a giant cock. So corny. The way they interspliced um, that shot and they were like, okay, we're yeah. going to go into filmic stuff. This scene uh, is, is great. It really makes me uncomfortable every time I watch it, but I love that. It's funny I how love often that. they let it get blurry in, yeah. the, in these close-ups here because yeah, yeah. it matches with the 70 vibe of the film that they keep kind of cutting to. It is re- this shot is really cool. That was this, a, great, that was a always, great transition. This one always sticks out in my head. It's so interesting. And they go into the camera. Yeah, and it's like I'm pre- the image is upside down. Which is how it's like filmed in real life. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen the shutter flash. It's really cool. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's uh, so I wanted to say earlier that tasteful that how they do this, basic, even though it's like so smutty. <laughs> 
you were, you, we were talking about uh, shots and moving and long uh -huh. takes. And, but, but Paul Thomas Anderson is such a creative director. Every, everything is so motivated. Yeah. And, and 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 even if we're going into a camera and then we're seeing the thing and all that, it's like, well, that just sounds creative. Like, no, we're building this vibe, this fucked up, like we're about to join the porn industry yeah. for the next 45 minutes of this movie, if not yeah. hour, you know, like we're, we're in it. Yeah. Like it's crazy how, um, how they pulled this off without it seeming, I don't know. I don't know how they pull it off. It like feels tasteful, even though it's constantly smutty and like uncomfortable. It's yeah. still, it feels, I, I think it's just like how genuine everything feels and how, how genuine the characters feel. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's you don't feel like they indulge in the dirty part of things you feel like they indulge in the humanity of things and that's just the industry they exist in that's just the world the time the era the the industry the culture they live in the way the way jack walks around just being like cursing and saying yeah sexy bitch and like all this stuff he's not even like trying to be like a dickhead or no it's just, people. Uh, he's, that's just his that's a, what a, they're a, in a you know? pitbull is gonna act like a pitbull yeah chihuahua is gonna act like a chihuahua you know that kind of a thing yeah Fish is Look at how him. he's sitting in the chair. He looks so satisfied. Yeah, uh, he's, Burt Reynolds. He's yeah. got the cigar. He's just like, oh, he looks like. I don't know. I don't know what he gets out of doing this job, besides the money, obviously. Well, he, but, but he obviously enjoys he watching to, people. He wants fuck. to be an artist. He wants too. to, but he likes. He does genuinely want to be an artist for sure. But part of him, I think, just he wants to watch because, like. Even when they're not filming scenes, he loves to watch. He has Roller Girl and him have sex earlier at the beginning, and mm -hmm. um, great music just constantly, constantly. Every time a good track ends, another one starts. Well, that's how the, that's what it truly feels inside of the Alfred Molina scene, where yeah. it's just like track oh. after track. It, is it that three, scene, is it three songs in that one? You could have, you could have. Um, it feels it's like it's at three. least two. It's, it's at, at least, least two. two. I know that. Yeah, Jesse's girl mm -hmm. and. Motorman! <laughs> the way he does that, totally off tune and just terrible, drugged out. It's like I've witnessed people at parties doing that where like the hook comes around yeah. and they try to do it. And it's completely off key and terrible. And you're just like, oh, just let the song play. Right? <laughs> I've seen people do that at parties. It's so funny. Yeah, There's yeah. so many real little moments like that where people do uncomfortable, yeah. no, weird, that, awkward that's things. That's what I wanted to get it's at. intentional. Yeah, I, love I, it. I wanted I love to get it. at that. The... Uh... How the, awkward everything how, is. How he's, you know? he's able to have these designed shots. Yeah. He's able to put emotion into his structured shots. But within that, the performances and the characters and the writing and the way it's blocked mm -hmm. makes it feel at times improvisational. Just yeah. the way life feels where it's just people it are... It feels real. They're bumbling along. Real, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just bumbling along, going about my, my day. And, yeah. and here... Right? Like, it's, yeah, yeah. it's so... And then does this character have even a name? this shot when they're in the car? The, the, Brock Landers. Imagine when they. This is probably one of the easiest things they ever had to shoot. They're just doing like they're they're shaking the car outside. Doing, they're just yeah, doing this. Yeah, yeah. They might not even be shaking the car. They might just be doing exactly. This exactly. The they're just doing this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the uh, first hour of this movie goes at such a nicely slow pace where you really get to see minus the two montages. Well, what I'm saying is like now we're getting to that. It's been like an hour. Right. It's been like an hour and they set it up very intentionally. Like I wouldn't say too slowly, but some people would say too slowly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I love it because they take so much time. And by this point, you're invested in these people and you've seen them be awkward and shy and humble and searching for a home. And, and you've having seen some insights into where family and the struggle. They might get dark. Yeah. You, you're getting little hints of things like and that. You're hope, and you're like, oh, God, I hope they don't. But at this point, everything's very clear who everyone is and what their relationships are, and it's set up. And then time starts skipping forward; it starts getting faster. This and faster is the happiest. They're in the flow. This is the know? happiest. This is the of happiest all of them will ever be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Oh, I mean, man. for a lot of yeah. them. And honestly, some of the most unhappy people during this time end up being the happiest later. Like um, so, uh, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. He's not happy ever until like he never, until he talks he, to his he, future wife at a party. He's having a one hard day. time growing into his skin or something like that. Yeah. I, the whole cowboy thing, I I don't get. Yeah, I don't get where that comes from. I don't I don't know if the cowboy thing came back in the seventies or something, and yeah, and then I think, it came uh, yeah. out of fashion again later. I, I don't know. I don't know what the history with that is, but it's so funny when he puts when he's in when he puts on the stereo and he's playing like ding 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 ding, ding, ding like cowboy music. He's like, yeah, get into it. Yeah, movie hips if you want. And the guy's like, okay, all right, see you, see you, man. He just <laughs> bye -bye. Ruins the sale, but he we yeah. wants to, but he wants to be a legit uh, person. 
He's just he yeah. wants to have like a unique style. It's just that everyone hates what he's into this cowboy thing. Well, it's uh, he's not happy. Uh, uh, I don't think you ever actually even see him do a scene in this movie. I don't think you ever see him do a scene. You never no. see him do a porn scene. He, he yeah. doesn't even really seem like he's that invested from our perspective because you don't see it. True. Um, maybe Don Cheadle said, no nudity for me, baby. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that scene got cut. I know there was some stuff that got cut. Um, Can you uh, Don Cheadle me out? <laughs> oh, this is great. He's like, I love this. This is the best thing we've ever done. And he's like, it's a real movie, Jack. It's a real movie. It's a real movie. It's a real movie, Jack. Yeah. And, and then that moment comes back later in the 80s. Right. When they're shooting it on film. He's like, how's it looking? It is what it is. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. I, I know, is that what he out. says? It is what it is? is he's that, like, it is, is what it is. Exact, yeah. It's a great quote. Well, Jack comes in. He says, how's it looking? And he's like, it is what it is. And you can tell they're both just completely uninvested. Yep. You know, the passion that he had looking over his shoulder and being like, do this, do that, cut this. This is this is the best thing we've ever done. This is what people are going to remember me by. Painting. Oh, my God. I know. It looks so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. It's bad. Um, oh, they're all so bad. Jesse. That's who. Did. Jesse did that oil painting for me. Uh, yeah. This car is one of the best jokes in this movie, I think. Because no one actually directly makes any kind of reference or insinuation that it's like his cock. True that. But it's so obvious that's what it is. You, make a you know what I mean? Point. No one points it out. No one makes it on the nose, but it's so obvious to us. You can't help but laugh at this car. Nobody, it's well, so nobody wants to put a cock on their nose. That's an odd sight. <laughs> this guy. That's I such love a great him. First time we meet him, right? Just blasts through the gate. Yeah, yeah. First time we see him. He's so good. Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane, man. And he's fucking killer. He's in it. so great in this movie. <laughs> that guy entered. He's bad news. Until he yep. dies, bad news happens. Yeah. Right now, he entered the world. Fucking William H. Macy's about to kill himself. All the spoilers. Bad... Spoiler alert. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. But he's about to do coke too for the first time. Right? This is it's the all this is where the scene. But get this, he's um, about to be happy. Starts going downhill. Yeah, he. This Don is, is about to yeah. enter like his life. He's and gonna... he's wearing this like white angel. He took his fucking wig ball. off. He said, "I'm not yeah, gonna try to be this person off. anymore." You know. Like, I'm going to try to be myself. I love all of his nonsense jargon, too. He's like, this you got to get the, the extra quadrants on the hi-fi. You, so you, you can see he's just bullshitting. He's totally bullshitting. He's, like, stuttering, and he gets all shy. He has no he idea what he's saying. Yeah, he has no idea. So this is... She's about to introduce him. Try Basically, she wants a drugs. child that will that like will be with her, that she can she take care some, of. That yes. Will, she wants Misery someone, loves company. Yeah, exactly. Misery loves company. Yeah, exactly. She's bringing him into her world because she's broken and she's on the drugs and it's like the only thing getting her through all of this and yeah. so like it's got to be weird for her because she's seen so many young guys come and go I she's love, seen it like so aspirin. much aspirin it tastes, yeah, like, it tastes aspirin. like aspirin she's like yeah that's the drip it's great it's the best part uh. <laughs> um no but it's got to be interesting for her because she's already seen past the veil for years and years and years Oh, when yeah. they call her sexy bitch, sexy fox, or whatever. She looks past it. She she's goes, the, she goes the, she, mm, I'm going to bed, and then goes to bed. She's, like, so numb to all of this because she can hear she's them been there saying, for where's Maggie? Them. Where's Maggie? And she's like, I'm doing my... Do you think my, she heard I'm, that and just... I think that's the premise is, like, oh. there's Maggie doing her line. And she's, like, going, like, <laughs> I don't fucking care. I'm railing away. That's rough, man. Oh, and she this guy, name. video. Uh, yeah, this is the, I, I don't do video. I do art. He's getting uh, he's getting introduced to what's ultimately going to be the downfall of his industry. I think. Can I get a beer? Oh yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Pilsner. Pils. Everyone's kind of getting introduced to something that's going to be part of their own demise. No, the new thing's streaming. Uh huh. It's streaming. Yeah. Yep. And they're like, fuck Same that, thing. I'll never, I'll the never new be streaming. things discs. Yeah, yeah. You have to accept the future. You have to, otherwise you are going to die a dinosaur. It's true. You know? And and I like how it's a dinosaur that's telling him. <laughs> that is kind of funny. He's got this old old country guy, this southern boy. I like lollipops in my mouth. I like mouth butter in my ass and, my and lollipops in my mouth. Now think about this. In many ways, you got to think about Paul Thomas Anderson having written this, right? And people telling him film is too expensive. So he puts that line in his fucking movie. It's like, yeah. no, we're using yeah. fucking film. I don't care. You want to just make your fucking stupid movies with video. Because when he makes this... This is shot on film? This is shot on film. Yeah, that's what I thought. It, of course it's shot on film. Why but, don't we but have this a 4K is the But this is then, the yeah. advent of video. Video is just coming out yeah. in the 90s. So it's a direct like knock on that. It's, it's, it's a total marriage of how it changed in yeah. some ways from the 70s to 80s. And however, for the porn industry and videos and the like. But also how you're going to literally film them 
for real movies later on. It'd be nice to get like a 4K absurd, transfer yeah. of this, of the original film, because I've only been able to see it in 1080p, which is okay, but you know. Why'd you do that, Scotty? What the fuck, man? Yo, oh, it. man, I just feel so bad for him. I feel bad. I feel really but, bad yo, get for this, like, people, When he's honestly. doing like, keep your eyes closed, keep your eyes closed, it's a direct nod here, to here, how, here, here, well, that's how here, he here, did, here. that's how what he did to Julianne Moore, uh, Marky Mark did, right? Dirk Diggler, he's like, keep your eyes closed. He goes, this is my favorite part. Oh, and he shows oh. it, and he shows his car to her. So yeah. he, he overheard that, or he told the story oh, to yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, you're and right. And he's really doing his best to emulate this he guy. He wants to be this guy. Yeah. He not only that, but he wants to be with him, right? Yeah. I mean, he's parked right behind his rear there while yeah. coming on to him. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> That one's that one's the best one of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a fucking idiot. I'm such a fucking so idiot. I'm so such a fucking idiot. Yeah. Such a fucking idiot. I'm really wasted. Uh, he here, says that man, so I'm many times in a row. Oh, it's too. so heartbreaking. It's, I forgot to mention this earlier. When the scene starts, you get I think Roller Girl coming up and taking a photo of the banner that says "Goodbye 70s, Hello 80s." And I don't know if this is on purpose or not, but it works so fucking well. She rolls over and stops and takes a photo and her head is covering the O. And so it looks like hell 80s. And I I really don't know if that was intentional oh, or not. Oh, definitely. But the, it hit me because you have hell in big letters. Because the 80s are hell. 80s. Hell, yeah. Hell, hell, yeah, hell yeah, it's really oh, bad. Oh, brilliant, so, brilliant, yeah. It's great choreography, all these people it's, running it's around. It's almost midnight. Everyone's excited. Does he even say he's anything to them before he blows his brains out? Yeah, he says out? nothing. Oh, when he comes out after? Yeah. yeah. He's just, he just playing that song right now. Do it! Dude, man. I, what I love about William H. Macy is the way he puts his drink down on top of his car like it fucking matters before he grabs his gun mm. and loads it. He doesn't want to spill his drink. They they cut in there when they cut to the group. So they were able to make it feel that's a beautiful cut to do that long take cut to the party of everyone screaming then cut back to like where we had entered from down the hall. Yeah. So that way we have time to make sure you don't have to see the back of his head and the wig on top of it with the prosthetic oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. great little uh, Heidi cut. You know what I mean? Uh, you have to think about like animation where you're like, I don't want to have to draw the guy walking into it and sitting down. Mm -hmm. Can I just cut back to him going like this? Yeah. Okay, what can we cut to outside of that so I can just animate him going like this? You know, you it's know? interesting. Um, I've always wondered like, what is Amber's uh, motivation for doing this? Um, documentary? Documentary. It, do it doesn't really paint him in a good light, you know? Okay, so I think it works kind of twofold. One, she's one. So she ridiculous. is so distracted and not focused on what actually matters, and that's uh -huh. her child, yeah, right, and her yeah. family, and what she apparently really does want to care about. And she it, says it, she does, right, right. So that is being uh, sort of transposed onto Marky Mark, right. And yeah. so then you got you got that going on, and then also why is she? Uh, uh, she can't see how deluded she is, and we are also getting basically a kind of a documentary montage within the film as well. They do this in Raging Bull, where they, they they show him get married and then goes to color film for a time. And then we go right back into black and white again. But we see a bit of life move mm. forward and they do it in that kind of eight millimeter vibe. So it does fit her doing that. You, I think you're right to question it. But like, I think she's also maybe trying to become maybe a producer down the line. She is getting yeah, older, director. so she's she learning how to edit. And so she's made this on the side, perhaps. Yeah. And you this know? is, you know, this is actually a moment where um, it shows like, even though I said, I said Burt Reynolds character, Jack, he's not really like a good guy in a broad context, but mm -hmm. within the context of this world, he he's kind of a good guy. He does right by everyone. Just the fact that like when they come out of this little documentary here, He's immediately like, how did it turn out? How did it go? Like, he's invested. He's invested in letting right. Amber do her thing and right. do this film, even though it makes them all look bad. They have a... They have he's a, weirdly uh, supportive for they, also being a sleazeball, you know? They have a they have a pride, basically. Like, they're a pack of lions. Yeah. And he is the head of that pride. Yeah. You know, and lions can be vicious. But I do think it's funny how he's doing all this stuff about how we need to do better and we're going to help people and all this stuff. And then the B-roll is just him walking around like a sewer. Where oh, this fucking scene, dude. Oh, uh, this is this is the colonel. the colonel. Yeah. When he finally admits what he is. Yeah. The the look of it's just, just heartbreak on Bert's uh, on wow. Jack's face is unbelievable. And then the the most interesting thing about this scene is how when the when the phone call runs out of time uh, and it goes silent and you see him and he's just yelling, I'm your friend, Jack. Right. Tell me I'm your friend. But you don't hear any audio. You just hear him breathing. And he's like banging on the glass, but there's no sound. 
You know what this reminds me of? Have you seen Paris, Texas? Mm -mm. So you got to see Paris, Texas by uh, Paris, Texas. Wim Wenders. It's awesome. Okay. Harry Dean Stanton and uh, a collection of great, great actors. Dean Stockwell and wonderful actors in this mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. But there's a scene where it's kind of like that. You, the audio has, they're, they're separated by, I'm, I don't want to ruin it, but they're separated uh -huh. by a, 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 a basically a glass mirror. One person can see yeah. the other person, the other person can't see them. And they have a phone that they can talk to on the other You didn't ends. do anything. You didn't do anything, right? Yeah, you and, didn't do anything. But when they go back and forth between the rooms, you uh -huh. can hear the difference in breathing okay. on one side or the other. Uh -huh. So you can hear, and it's quite distinct, the way one room feels to the other room. That's and cool. They're, and they're definitely doing this here. I like that kind of stuff. I like that kind of messing with diegetic audio without it being like you couldn't do that the entire movie you can't do it all no it's but, but it, for something but like it helps this. this moment if you heard him tapping on the gas on the glass and you heard his muffled voice it wouldn't be as because like it's you you you're him right now everything goes quiet when you realize what's going on here and you're separated by this guy who you're like did i ever really know this guy yeah, he can't even look him in the eye. Was he eye. ever real? He yeah, he's like, he's like, eye. no, no, no. Some amazing acting. I wonder if Burt was nominated for this, but um, it doesn't matter. It's definitely one of his best yeah, roles ever. It, this scene always sticks out to me, the way he's knocking and he's shouting and you don't hear anything. You just hear him breathing like... <sighs> Can you imagine having to play that act, be that role? It's such a, yeah, like, right? <laughs> nobody wants to play that role. This guy's a real niche actor. He's he's not been in many things, but he's good. Yeah, yeah, right. He's reliable. He's like, sure, I'll, yeah. I'll play that. Ugh. I'll be I'll be the pedo. <laughs> but, oh, man. It's, oh, man. It's sad. I love all the close-ups of sick. the bulbs flashing. But, it's really cool. But, yeah, Burt, man, uh, is, uh, have you seen, uh, you've seen Deliverance, right? No. You've never seen Deliverance? No. With, were they? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, uh, I've seen scenes from it. I've never seen the whole thing though. Ooh. He's in that. Oh yeah, Burt Reynolds. He's fucking Mr. Fucking Bow and Arrow. Oh dude. shit, yeah, it's Burt Reynolds and John Voight, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta oh, check yeah. that out. I gotta yeah, check that out. Do. Not just, but also, uh, what's his fuck? He just passed away actually last year. Um, mm. um, he's uh, uh, he's from a network. Where he's, you've seen Network, mm. where he's like, you will, Mister. Uh, I can't think of his uh, Walt. Well, uh, uh, Betty. Uh, something Betty. Uh, Betty. Uh, uh, Ned Betty. Ned Beatty. Mm. yeah Ned oh, Beatty um, they're an ama amazing movie you gotta see it okay I, I, yeah, Burt Reynolds it out, is man. like fucking epic I'll check uh, it out I didn't see nothing I love how this scene mirrors again there's multiple scenes where they're all talking at parties and they're not hearing each other correctly like they're all just shouting in a bunch of noise and there's a scene earlier where that happens where he's like yeah I'm a magician he's like does it worry you about all the demons and he's like demons no no it's magic you know it's an illusion he's like yeah it's confusing but there's multiple scenes where they're all talking at parties and they're not hearing each other correctly like they're all just shouting in a bunch of noise and not actually paying enough attention. Right, right, right. Um, it's an interesting thing to come back to. Oh, great, great use of that candid angle. I, I don't remember well, seeing okay, any of the candid no, angles. Let's go back to that. that. It does a really great job yeah. of making you feel disconnected like disconnected, the characters. Yeah. I think thematically it works really well because all these people, they're all together, but they're all in a sense in their own world. They're all in their own delusions. So yeah, they're all together. They're all friends. They're all here for each other and whatnot. But they're also like kind of swallowed in their own experience and so when they're talking to each other and they're trying to communicate and they're all mishearing each other and not really paying attention it, it kind of reminds you that they're all in their own world he's in his own fame thing you know uh the other guy wants to be a magician an illusionist they all have this like idea of where they're going and who they're going to be and right now at this and they're, moment and, they're immersed and in right that. now they're at this attention. moment when he loses his shit yeah. is a way of like hey man we're always in our own thing i thought yeah. you were cool and willing for us to be in our like it hasn't ever bothered you before yeah kind of a, uh, an idea now we we introduce this <laughs> but the thing is but the thing John is but yeah yeah that's great when he pops up like, oh, what's he gonna do right uh, but but but, but base, and so he's still trying to work with him here. But yeah, but but he's trying. Really but the thing hard, is, Jack actually. Jack is trying. But he that's why he's already hired the other guy because he can see things falling apart. He's getting prepared. Yeah, he's seen he's, this before. He's done this a million he's times. Wise. You know, they're doing the movie mm -hmm. thing like they always have. They're getting like desynchronized slowly. They're right. getting disconnected yeah. from each other because they're all caught up in their own narrative, and they're they're desynchronizing more and more, and they're like starting to spread apart now. And poor yeah. Scotty in the background, he just looks so yeah broken. this is a, a him dancing oh it's so funny this is a great example of the roller coaster in this movie because you go from this brutal heartbreaking scene where he's coked out he can't get hard he can't do his job everyone falls out and then he goes straight to this silly wacky looney tune he's shit trying, yeah, yeah, well, his, his ego is, is getting <laughs> too overblown he's about to pop he's surrounded by his yes men or whatever but also the drugs are there he's still got money he's blowing through it trying to be like i'm gonna yeah. set up my own path 
and yet we're the shots are just wide enough to where we're able to laugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This whole final scene is just brilliant. The the firecrackers, the music. Again, this Alfred is, Molina. The wrapping around of the heads here is. Uh, oh, I love and it. Then we just did a backward, and movie. we're cutting, and yeah. we can see that how they're going. Yeah. So it's about like that. That they broke the one eighty or broke the rule. They were we're getting disjointed in our heads a bit, yeah. while also. Uh, well, instead of doing a shot reverse shot, they're doing a, a rotate reverse rotate. And look, even they're even rotating as he walks. You yeah, know, like sort of a reservoir. So dogs there, there is vibe. no one eighty degree rule here because they're rotating completely around the scene. Well, so you like are, you having, are, but but you're breaking your no, motion. You're breaking. Well, no, your motion. It's go, it goes all the way around. This you is, know. is this one of the most iconic drug deal movies or drug deal uh, scenes When I think of, of drug time? deal scenes in movies, I think of this scene. This is one of the best I've ever seen. It's amazing. It's so iconic. I saw another review of this movie. Some asshole wrote like, ah, uh, it was because there's not many people that don't like this movie on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh -huh. But it goes, uh, it goes, uh, uh, another, another case of a director playing DJ. Ugh. And I'm like, that's what you got from this movie? Really? Yeah, I mean, this this movie's soundtrack is killer. It's super good. It's super good. God, Alfred Lee is such a good actor, man. He's, I love him so much. I love him. I love this guy, too, with the firecrackers. By the way, I got a question that I always forget when I'm watching. Yeah. What happens to that guy when the when the guns start going off? He's like, you, you want to play baseball? Play baseball. You want to play baseball. You never played baseball? I played t-ball. With weed, though. No, with weed. No, T ball is what I call uh, T ball is what I call T ball is what I call T ball. T ball is what do I call T ball is what I call T ball. T ball is what I call. All right, so I love when they flinch right before, like you think that the the gun went off, but it's a firecracker. Yeah. So you are also now feeling completely their vibe. Yeah, I feel anxious when I watch this movie. Yeah, because I'm really jumpy to loud noises. Yeah, So yeah. What? What? <laughs> I love his freak out. He was like, no, we're going to do what I want to do. <laughs> his voice that he uses. I love how he, he says, so he's like, hey, 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 we want another yeah, thing. And they're not they're even not listening. They're not yeah. even paying attention. There's another scene where another people, people are talking not, yes, and yeah. no one's paying attention. Yeah, this like, he's having such... his face out of the shot the whole time until he accepts him. That's good. Right. You right. don't see his face. No, you don't. It's out of frame until Wait. he finally... And that's done, and, back, and then but, you, get a you, but shot. you know what? That actually that might not have been uh, Burt Reynolds. I, I'm I'm gonna actually bet money that it wasn't him. That was a wig on somebody else. I don't think so. I didn't see anything that was striking that showed me that that was him. I don't. Well, but you, I don't know. And I'm man. telling you, the second shot was they got a. Uh, just saying. I think it was an artistic choice. I don't think it was a stunt double. Right there, double. that wasn't him either. Unless he sits down right there. That wasn't Burt Reynolds. You don't think that was him? No. Why would you have Burt Reynolds walk up and not even show his face? No, that's not Burt Reynolds. Nowadays, they do that shit a lot more than they used to, I feel like. Trust me. Burt Reynolds, he was you already having trouble right. with you the director. Right. You could be right. He's having trouble with him. He couldn't get certain shots. I just need you to walk up and hug him from this angle. I'll figure it out. You're going to shoot me from the back of that because I can't work with you, Philip. You could be right. You could be right. But I don't know. You do see a lot of his arms and his body. And Very it, uh, a Halloween shot here. When, when Jamie Lee Curtis looks out the window to, to Michael Myers. So yeah, this is a great shot. This is a very comforting scene, even though it's extremely comforting. Even though it's not really like a happy ending because they're all stuck where they started, sure. and they're all they're all together, but they're they still weathered broken the storm. together. They weather the storm. It's still kind of comforting because like they're all looking for a family and they're looking for a home, and they're they're here, right? You know, they got the mom figure, they got the dad figure. Everyone else has something outside of this world that they aspire to, and they all suck at it. And he is happy just doing that and staying there. He is willing to work in the porn industry. He understands that's yeah. where his lot in life is. Other yeah. people are still haven't resigned themselves or seen yeah. outside of that. Yeah, they still see the delight at the end of the tunnel. He goes, no, baby, exactly. life is yeah. the tunnel. Everyone else is in the business of being a cog in a machine. And they all have aspirations outside of that that they're not good enough to do. But he... His he doesn't have those outside at least as far as what we see in the movie he doesn't have those outside aspirations because he is the machine and he puts himself to the top so it's almost like he's the Wizard of Oz like he is the one who's pulling all the levers and stuff like that mm -hmm. and he I, he doesn't seem to believe in the magic like they do he does take care of his pride but you're gonna fuck he when keeps you're with his them. machine oiled yeah very much a lot of lube a lot of lube yeah yeah <laughs> keeps it turning yeah 
there's a lot of like mirror stuff in this movie people looking in mirrors trying to see what they want to see i'm all about the mirrors man. trying to be what they want to be um she looks bad she looks unhappy right and now she's we're... here a, a decade and a half later and, he, and he's still is, saying yeah. you're the foxy's bitch around and it's like they're not married he's not her husband they're not in like a real relationship she just mm-hmm. lives there and works for him and mm-hmm and it's like it's hanging over her head as he's talking down to her and like putting her yeah, in place Yeah, I feel really again. bad for her. I feel really bad for him too. But... This is this is without a doubt a nod. This being the ending scene too because that's entertaining. This is a great scene. He's talking himself up. Um, yeah, he is. Your big, bright, shining star. Poor, poor life choices. And you know, I never thought I would watch a movie that ends with a blatant cock shot and just adore it. After all the hype, after all of the... Um, mystique and all the times you almost see it but don't and the bulges and how like everything in this movie revolves around his dick and, and all just, of this and then like well here you all go. of this happens because of his dick it's like the genesis of everything and then right at the movie right at the end he steps out of frame you don't even see his face it's totally depersonalized and then you get here it is yeah. there it is and it's just like it doesn't it's, flop out he almost just pulls his pants he just pulls it out he just pulls it out and it's like so anticlimactic and it's funny as fuck but it's also sad because it's like, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. But in a way, that's actually really smart. To have, like people are gonna go like, oh yeah, but you stay at the end, you can just like, so the, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like you, it's worth it. It's worth it for the last. Oh man. But but you're right. The whole life, everyone's life revolved uh, like which that meant this this spurred so much chaos. It, it makes it feel so pointless because you just you see it at the end and you're like, yeah, it's a dick. You're right though, man. Some of the responses where people are like, he's looking down and he goes, oh. <laughs> the reaction shots in the first half of the movie. Well, thank you. When they all see it, and they're like, "Whoa!" Yeah, that's one of my favorite reaction thank shots. You, when he goes, even then, they're still calling him Eddie. Him. Yeah. And then Eddie walks away, and he just doesn't move. He's like, just smiling. He's just because he's, he's just, like freako. Yeah, because <laughs> he's a freak. Yeah. It's a fucking. Well, he's like, he's like Glenn Maxwell kind of guy, you know? Or what was the dude that hung himself? Uh, I don't know. You know the guy that the guy that hung himself in prison with after like for like having the island epstein yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> jeff jeff yeah i want to put on my 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 boogie shoes that's great yeah i uh, yeah it is a great movie uh, but i you know the the big gripe i have is they don't actually play the song boogie nights and i'll never forgive it for that yeah it's my biggest criticism it's my biggest so i'll give it a i'll give it a uh uh two and a half out of three claps well all right um, man um no i give it a three claps though because i love this movie you know I love oh this. i'm giving this three claps it's as well claps yeah yeah okay. bam yeah <laughs> it's supposed to be uh where's ringo it's supposed to be three but i had a i had a beer so i know where it goes i gave it a little extra clap well there it is new line cinema That's man she wrote. Put some of the best movies out there it's great all it's right man great. all right thanks for having me yeah and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, well, hey, what, do, that, what do you want to do? Have you seen Black Dynamite? I haven't seen that movie in a while. I'd love to watch it. It's, it's real funny. Well, all right. Yeah. That sounds very interesting. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Uh, until next time. Nice. <laughs>